Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Queer Conversations. I am your host, G of Vera G TV, and I'm here every Tuesday, 6 p.m. EST, sharing LGBTQ stories and allies. And today, our guest is Crystal Jadon. Jadon. Jadon, yes. <laughs> who's an artist and the founder of Art Mama Moves. Welcome. Thank you. Great Thank to have you. you. Yes, I'm very excited. To yeah. Be here. <laughs> um, please uh, like this page, Vera G TV. Please share this conversation and <laughs> join the conversation. Ask questions, comment, and so on. So we'll start off with Crystal as an artist. What kind of art do you do, and what inspired you to become an artist? Um, I've pretty much been an artist my whole life. Um, I started painting like 2012. Before that, I did a lot of doodling on pieces of wood or paper when I was at work, you know, just like construction paper or whatever. Okay. Um, and, but I was a writer. I've been a writer since I was about 13. And the first okay. thing I used to do when I started painting was painting just like words or like poems that I'd written. I'd try to like sketch them on a painting. And then I was able to step outside my comfort zone and quit using words. So some of my older paintings still have words in them. Okay, but I would try to take the letters and form shapes. And that's how I started painting. Okay. Um, so a little bit about writing. Hello, thanks for joining us. We have a bunch of people on. Thank you so much. Um, please ask questions. Crystal is an artist. And would you you'd say curator as well? Yeah, yeah, I would say, yeah. I would say, I would say, I'm still learning how to okay. curate, though. Okay, that's fine. Um, so ask questions. We, we're going to get more into details about with, about Crystal. So you said you're a writer as well. So what what yes. do you write? Like, um, I started out writing poetry mm -hmm. when I was younger, about 13, and then I started writing short stories. I've submitted a few stories. Oh, nice. um, I've been working on the same great American novel for about 10 years. Wow, um, how far are you? Uh... I guess I have to either commit to finishing it or okay. just stop adding things. It's like a sci-fi epic. Oh, that's great. Um, I love uh, Dune and Frank okay. Herbert. And okay. so I was like, okay, I want to do something like that. But that's like 10 books and I can't seem to squeeze my one together. So I don't know. Well, maybe it doesn't have to be uh, one book because you have like Harry Potter, which is yeah. all these stories. I think it's like eight or 10 books. You know, yeah, so you could be having that. You could have that that gold mine right there. Could Let's be. see, painting nights. Did you bring work to share with us? What type of paint is your main medium? Um, I mainly work with acrylics. I also do mixed media. So sometimes I take small pieces of paper and I'll paint on the paper and then apply it to the canvas and then paint on the canvas. A lot of my work has started to. Um, be multi-layered okay. so I'll start off with like a base color acrylic and then I'll add like the paper cutouts that I've done and then paint around them and they end up making shapes uh, I don't ever really pre-plan a painting okay sometimes I do but when I do they end up being different than what I imagined anyway right I, I can imagine that's, um, excuse me <laughs> <laughs> okay bless you bless thank you. you thank you it's a live sneeze with the bless you and Makatat Denise is saying she's beautiful, so you got a compliment there. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I should have brought my girl because I do paint on this, uh, like, uh, I guess a Barbie. I guess okay. I can say that without her name, Mattel, or anything. Right. And I um, paint her and sometimes use her in photography. Oh, interesting. So um, she's been painted all different ways wow. um, an alien, a volcano lava lady, um, a robot. So nice. I like to use her when I'm trying to, I guess, just like symbolize emotions or something that I might be feeling. But sometimes people get a little weirded out by it. They're like, oh, you're playing with the doll. I'm like, no, she's a model. Right, and right. I'm just painting on it. Right. I, I hear but, that. Um, I hear that. And then you have another question. So she doesn't have art with her today, but she has art in the Uncommon Gallery? Yes, in Uncommon Gallery um, um, on East Commercial, downtown Fort Lauderdale. And um, you can see a lot of the things I post on um, Instagram or Facebook. Okay, great. I, we have the link here. It's, um, so you could put the link here. We have some people helping us here. Thank you for helping us. Um, so the link for Art Mama Moves. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and we have a question and we'll get into what Art Mama Moves is. But are you also a photographer? 
Yes. Wow. But um, how did you know, David? <laughs> I I used to be a cinematographer, photographer for a while. Um, I worked on like twenty movies, indie wow. movies around, wow. mostly in Miami, mostly in Spanish speaking movies, and I don't really speak Spanish, okay. so it was really interesting, but yeah. fun. Um, I've done almost everything on a movie set, cinematography. Wow. Um, I have been a boom mic operator, climb trees, got no roofs, done everything. <laughs> I just love it. You, you love know? it all. But um, I guess the practical side of it is when the technology advances, then what I have is just kind of like, okay, what am I going to do with that? So, you know, right. the editing becomes different and right. I'm like, I don't know. Yes. So, so you've done yes. a lot. So yes. Art Mama Moves. What is Art Mama Moves? Our Mama Moves is a collective of women and not, I wouldn't say only women now because it's more woman centered okay. than woman exclusive. Right. So um, what I wanted to do was provide an avenue for artists, alternative, subversive, some people are anti-capitalist, some people are anarchist, and they really have a hard time, or I should say we have had a hard time in the past putting our art out there or having submitted art to more, um, I guess, I don't want to say formal, but more traditional um, shows. So in Fort Lauderdale, you know, we have a lot of tourist-based things and a lot of things that many of us just don't fit into. Right. So I started mm -hmm. thinking, I know a lot of artists. I know a lot of people who want to show but don't show. I know a lot of people who feel like their politics might, you know, interfere with their progression. So I was like, I don't, I don't care about that. So um, let's do a show. Mm -hmm. And the first show I did was in Atlanta. And it was just like a pop-up show at my friend's tattoo parlor. And I was like, hey, can I do a show while I'm up here on vacation? And it worked out. So nice. after I did that show, I was like, well, it would be cool if I had some friends to do it with. And um, I was lucky enough to meet Zoe at 2 a.m. through Monique, who I was at her gallery for a while, at Gallery okay. X in Mass District. And this and is down in Fort Lauderdale now. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm speaking really fast. Okay, That's so the first time I started showing my artwork here, was at Gallery X, and it used to be a mass district, but it's since closed. Okay. Um, so when Monique was here, she introduced me to Zoe at 2 and. Okay. And that was a bar in Las Olas, and we did three shows there, and it was great. I had a lot of support, mm -hmm. and I was able to not only show artists that I knew, but meet new artists. So now at Uncommon Gallery, we've done our first show there. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Nice. Congrats. And so I'm just looking forward to doing more and offering opportunities to artists who feel like they're a little shy or mm -hmm. um, they may not be able to afford submission fees or um, they're just kind of making art and not showing it. So okay, so you're giving them that platform, that space. Mm -hmm. And we have a question here. Okay. Does your poetry reflect your personal experiences, feelings, or just more fictional? I know you said you write more fictional, but what about poetry? Um, okay. It yeah. depends. Like, um, when I was younger, everything was very political. Because, okay. you know, I was full of, like, my feminazi, I don't eat meat. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know how much I can say. You can say anything. <laughs> but, okay. Is, you can say yeah. anything. There's a full so, license to say whatever you want here. I was a very politically minded lesbian youth okay. and so everything was political for me everything had a meaning and i just wanted to tell the world what they were doing wrong okay. but then as i got older and i became a parent i was like okay well there is some romance to this so <laughs> then um a friend and i started a group on facebook called quiz broom and it called was what? I can't pronounce it, okay? okay? I always had a problem with it. It's called Quiz Brooms, as okay. far as I know. And it was basically black female erotica. Written okay. by people in the group or if they had some uh, that they wanted to share. So it was poetry, short stories, uh, pictures, okay, uh, nice. classic noir, all that stuff. So it was a really great group. Nice. But, you know, as groups go, people come and go, right. and then they just kind of fall off. But um, in that group, I wrote short stories, um, mostly like lesbian erotica and some poetry. And um, some of it was a little bit risque. And when I look back at it, I'm like, no wonder people were mad at me. <laughs> yeah. But um, it was pretty cool. I had a lot of fun, okay. and I've... I've 
not found anything that cool since. So um, I've written, I guess I would like say, to read some of the lesbian erotica. I don't know if you're ready. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I would like cool. to test that. Yeah, so, okay, so speaking of a le lesbian erotica, this lesbian, so I always ask my guests, in terms of the LGBTQ spectrum, um, uh, I'm just getting distracted by a comment here. So that's fine. Erotica, nice, risque, makes it sound even better. So, sound even better. Yes, oh. we think so. So we're very curious about that. So maybe one, okay. of your art, <laughs> maybe one of your art shows, you could have something available for people to read. Yeah, I could you put know? something together. I always wanted to do a book. In fact, one of the projects we worked on was um, like a photo. We wanted to do a coffee table book. Okay. But mm -hmm. the project never got off the ground. I went to New York and I photographed um, one of the members, one of my good friends, Stacy. And um, after that, it was just kind of like it yeah. never happened. But it would be nice to put together a book like that um, yeah. and have some nice images. And I learned a lot about different women through the ages mm -hmm. through that group. So, um, yeah, yeah, maybe so we, I will put we, together we, a book we, like yes, that. Yes, please yeah, do. Okay. Please do. <laughs> you have people very interested. Okay, so in terms of the LGBTQ spectrum, um, how do you identify? I identify as genderqueer now um, okay. because I've met a lot of people who feel like, oh, well, how, how can you call yourself a lesbian if you have kids and if you've ever had a relationship? I was like, you know what? Just to make it easy, I'm either no labels or since you can't do that anymore, I'm just genderqueer or whatever. I'm just, oh, interesting. I don't know. So, so that's interesting. So you feel like you can't say you're a lesbian because you were with a man and made children with a man? I can. Oh, because I, I, I make can. children with a man and I, I, can I can say and that I'm a lesbian. About myself. Right. But then it's like, um, interesting. It's hard trying to identify with maybe, I guess, younger lesbians sometimes. Okay. Because um, when I was a young lesbian, it was very political. You know, certain yeah. things just weren't said, certain right. things just weren't done. Um, and a lot of times, and people didn't have labels. Right. Okay. Now people are really starting to embrace labels. Like um, they don't say butch anymore. I learned that. Okay. It's like some people still either, say butch, but yeah, go ahead. I guess it depends on your community, but it's like now you're either a stud, masculine, right. or you're femme, feminine. Right. I'm like, well, I get dirty. I rarely do my nails. I wear makeup only when I feel like something's on my face. So <laughs> does that make me like? Like or what? Or what? Right. what does it? So it's hard for me to find a label for myself, even though I've been labeled, you know, but then talking to people like, God, you know, you're like a dude in a dress. I'm like, so what do you <laughs> call that? I don't know. So, so that's why you said gender. Queer, yeah, I don't that. really know. And you don't have I to. Wanna... Mis and I mis you know, I like to ask people, but we are in a place where there's a lot of labels and there's mm -hmm. also the opposite where people are saying I'm no label. So, um, and that's actually becoming a label also. There's a no label, right. there's a label called no label. Cause, right, or right. non-binary, which non -binary. I'm learning now. Right, but which is neither man or woman or female or male. Right, but when you try to explain that to sometimes people who are not familiar with that, they're like, well, I just call people by their name. I'm like, but that's not a gender, that's just an identification. Right. But there are actually genders where you don't you're like asexual right or so you know, or like you're, so. you have no gender so it's like gender genderless right. right so we had someone on the show cat chr um hey brooklyn right uh and rima right too thanks for joining everyone thank you ask questions um and great to have everybody everybody here but we had someone cat chr who's a jamaican performer singer songwriter and she's from, ah, they they <laughs> They, we. <laughs> they, they, you see, I have some of the pronouns. They recently became non binary. Okay. And we had a great conversation about that and the challenges, even with me saying the she versus the they, right. and the pronouns are challenging. So I apologize to Kat, who I just really was saying about the non binary, but that's one of the challenges. But we're going to get used to it. Right, we're right. We're going to get used to it. So, yeah, so the world has changed in terms of gender and sexuality and so on. Yeah. So, do you have like a particular coming out story, anything for, that you would share with the audience? Um, well, I came out to my parents twice. Okay. I came out to them when I was 19. Oh, nice. And then when I was 21, I got pregnant and they didn't understand. <laughs> and my mom was like, You're just eccentric. You don't know. I was like, I don't know if that means gay in your language, but <laughs> no. I. 
don't know either. So then I ended up coming out to them again when I was like 25, and then they just quit caring. Okay. They were just like, uh, whatever. Whatever, do you, I do you? Had There's a baby at 30, and they're like, you know what? <laughs> we just love you. Just yeah, good. Go ahead, little kid. Whatever you're calling yourself now. So I have a really accepting family. Wonderful. That's a um, blessing, yes. Yeah, it is a blessing, especially yeah. being from the South and with my parents being from the Deep South. Oh, and, they are? Yes. Mm -hmm, my oh. parents are from Sylvania, Georgia. Okay. So, um, yeah, but it's just, it's I've been lucky because mm -hmm. I know friends who are like totally disconnected from their family. Of course, yeah. Lost people. like friends and all that. So, um, it, it's nice to have a community outside of that if you can find it. But I was just fortunate and everybody just thinks I'm a big old weirdo anyway. So they're like, you know, nothing you say, being gay is not the worst thing we've ever seen you do. So I'm like, okay. No, that's great. So nice supportive set yeah, family. That's wonderful. Lucky that way. So um, with Art Mama Moves, did you come up with a name? Yeah. Oh, oh, wh why that name? I'm curious. Um, well, to be honest, I can't really remember why I originally started the name because when I was in Atlanta and I wanted to do the pop-up show, I couldn't think of a name and I just, that one came across my mind. And then when I came to Fort Lauderdale and I started wanting to put together a group, I tried everything. I was like, okay, well, what, you know, should I use this? Should I? And then our mama moves just felt like a good look. And I asked my best friend and she was like, why don't you just use our mama moves? I was like, <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. so it kind of stuck, and I like it, and it I like that it shows some movement, you know. Right, I like that. So I like that. So I came out to one of your shows probably two Fridays ago. It was a good experience. Yeah. For those who just joined, um, Art Mama Moves. You're it's primarily at the Uncommon Gallery, right? Yes. That's where it is. It's now, based, at, it's based at the Uncommon yes. Gallery, which is on Commercial in Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. right, just east of US One, and it was really. Um, a good experience. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, and you're going to have one coming out, another one coming out. How often do you do this? Do your shows? Well, we have gallery night at the um, Uncommon Gallery once every month. It's oh, on the right? second Friday of every month. But the event that we planned, Magical Nights in Marrakesh, that was like an Art Mama Moves thing. Basically, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to have artists who are already in the group have a way to show their work. And I was like, what's cool? And um, I knew that Billy does, um, you know, magical work, and she okay. reads, well, they, they read cards. Yes, our yes, mother, there they you read go. Cards. And so I was like, how do we center something around, like, magic? And then um, a conversation with Amanda, who's another art mama. At first, I was like, let's do a gypsy night. And she's like, no, that's racist. I was like, okay, I don't want to do that. So <laughs> no. just it kind of, in a conversation with her, we came up with uh, Magical Nights in Marrakesh. Okay. And it was, that was a nice vibe. Yeah. So I've had experiences where I'm somewhere and someone's like, come and do a reading. And I'm like, no. But that evening, I saw Billy. And I was like, what are you doing? And they said, they are doing readings. And um, so I sat and did it, and it was a good experience. Yeah. It was a really good experience. So hold on a moment. You got a question? Question. Um, have you submitted to the Thou Art Woman uh, cause? Okay. So thank you, by the way. So um, Vergy TV, we are producing an event called Thou Art Woman. In, in addition to doing this show here, we produce an event called Thou Art Woman. It's coming up March 1st through 3rd, 2019. And we have a call for artists out, and I see that we have the call there. Um, so please, if you're an artist in South Florida, please submit. Caroline, who's an artist, are you submitting? Are you, she's asking if you're submitting. Oh, I am. I plan to. Good. I just want to perfect some things. Good. You know I'm excited. Like, I'm excited. Ah, I want it to be so, better. Okay, so, good. Welcome. Yes, Welcome. I'm, I'm excited. So yes, Crystal is submitting. And Caroline, please let us know if you're submitting. We hope you are. Yes. And then there's another thing here. What art fairs are go are, are you going to this week? Are you going down to Art Basel? I'm not sure, but I really did want to go to the event at Girls Club Friday. Okay, did you I'm, make it? No, I couldn't okay, make it. I made it, but I made it late. Um, but I was it was still good. It was, I'm glad I made okay. it. I ended up doing all these mom errands that I didn't know was coming up. I so I did all that errands. mom errands. Yes. And then, um, shout out to my 17-year-old. 
Uh, but, but yes, but I did make it before they closed it. It was really good. It continues though. They, they yes, be up. it's an ongoing yeah. exhibit. And then, okay, and Caroline says, of course she's submitting. Looking forward to that. Excited to, to, to see that. And let me shout out Dr. Sarah Kunis. She's in New Orleans. She's the one who is uh, curating the show. She runs the art gallery at Xavier University. And um, she's very excited. And I'm very excited to have her on board as well. Um, okay, is, what is our time like, uh, David? I have no idea. Nine minutes. Oh, wonderful, we have a lot of time. So, but there was something else there that I wanted to touch on. Um, was there another question there from Carolyn? No. Okay, so um, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the kind of art themes that you touch on with like? Um, most of the time, well, recently I've been doing a lot of industrial, uh, postmodern, political things. Um, the piece that I'm working on now is called Innocence Lost, okay. and it was originally called Children in Cages. Oh, and wow. um, our most recent show at 2 and um, in July, it was a political show. Okay. And everything had a meaning. So it was around the time when they started interning the kids in these concentration camp type situations. And to me, I was just, that sounds so much like what happened during slavery mm -hmm. with children and even with Native American children. They always separate the children from the parents right, and it breaks down the community. Of course. So um, that's something that I'm working on now. I wanted to switch it up a little bit because it seemed like really flat. So now I'm adding to it, but you know how artists are. I'm like, yeah. ah, I just want to rip it up now and start no. over. But um, right now I'm feeling a lot more political for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. And um, But at the same time, I use a lot of women in my work. Okay. Um, a lot of eyes. I've been drawing eyes since I was a kid, and I don't know why. Mm. Just um, very Mesopotamian, sometimes just like very round Ethiopian type mm. art. And I didn't even know there were eyes like that until someone pointed it out to me. They were like, did you see this? I was like, no, but maybe, you know, in another life I did. But um, I usually do... Um, Themes that relate to me, okay. you know, and I'm a woman, so I can only relate to things right. that, you know, stir me as a woman. And I do use um, a lot of circles, a lot of geometric shapes sometimes, um, mainly because when I first started, I didn't know what to do. So I would just like take that circles is. and then like, you know, add them together and they ended up making a shape. And sometimes they really just come out that way. Um, right. So I would say... It's all abstract. All abstract. So whatever you see, it's I not like gonna abstract. yeah, it's not gonna look like So uh, your so your work for the Thou Art Woman show is gonna be an abstract or abstract. Yes. Okay. And I'm looking forward to doing more like three D found art pieces. I love okay. to just find things and people like them too. Like there's a whole series I did on pages from a textbook. So I painted these pages and um, framed them, and people liked them, and they nice. bought them. I was like, Good. awesome. I, so. <laughs> I, so two things before and I want to talk about. One is the buying of the art and selling the art. And one, just to touch a little bit more with what Caroline was asking about Art Basel. So I'm actually, after this, I'm going down to Art for Equality, um, which is down in Wynwood, and that's an HRC event. So I'm going to that. And this past Sunday at, oh, what is the new name? Art... History, History Fort Lauderdale. History Fort Lauderdale, so easy. History Fort Lauderdale hosted an Art Basel event on Sunday. Shout out to Tyra Chadwick who uh, co-curated it. It was a seminal art show, it was dynamic. Shout out to all of the seminal artists and also Adrian Chadwick who uh, moderated it. I got the chance to write an article about it like, before it came up, so I got to I meet with the artists and talk to them. So that was, that's an amazing show. So I recommend people go to that right here in Fort Lauderdale, at History Fort Lauderdale. It's formerly was called the... Fort Lauderdale Historical Society, thank you. And they just changed their name. So that's just five minutes from where we are. And it's a really good show to and see. And it was seminal artists? Seminal artists. Wow. All seminal artists. Nice. Yeah, maybe about 10 or 12 artists. And um, it's all sharing like their perspective of their mm -hmm. culture and history. And the panel, which I think, if you go to the page, the panel is actually up on uh, like a live feed that someone was going live that day. You could go back and watch the panel. It was really very, it was good. It was awesome. really good. And then, oh, Okay, Carolyn, let me know if you're down there. I'll be at, at the HRC event, which I think is at the R House. And then I have tickets for some other things. i got to figure out if I'm going down. I'm not sure. I think I, I don't remember what I have. I have emails of what I have. Um, and then uh, Friday, um, 
we're in David Muir's studio at the 1310 Gallery. He has, is it called Let There Be Reggae? It is. Wow. Let There Be Reggae, which is third, did I say reggae? Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm sounding more American. No offense to Americans, but I'm Jamaican, so I should say <sighs> reggae. I know, right? <laughs> Let There Be Reggae. That's in um, Winwood Thursday and Friday, right? Yes. Okay. I think I have tickets for Prism, Caroline. So I may do that. I'll see. I'll see. And then, so buying and selling art. So um, we're in an art gallery here, and I've been, I guess, at many, many events here at other art galleries. And sometimes I get the sense, and I'm aware that not many people, not sometimes people aren't even thinking of buying art. Mm -hmm. So okay, if I go to the mall, right? I have in my, in my mind that. I'm probably gonna buy something, right? Right, right. Yeah. Like I like nice shirts. I yeah. like I like ties. I like nice shirts. No. So, <laughs> oh my God! How'd you guess? How'd you guess? So I'm going to the mall. I like Macy's. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so if I'm going there, my mind is hopefully I find a shirt I like and it fits me nicely. I mm -hmm. might leave without the shirt because I just didn't have something else that I wanted. Maybe it was too much money, or I just it's like everything else I have, nothing special. But my mindset. Mm -hmm. My thinking is, do you think, or my question more, that people have that mindset when they enter art gallery? Are they coming to art gallery thinking, maybe I can get a piece I like? Or are they coming to say, I just want to have the experience? Um, I think it depends on who comes to your gallery. Uh, most people come, in my experience, to kind of view the art. And they're okay. like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take pictures. But uh, some galleries yeah. don't let you take pictures. Okay. So it kind of forces you to think, do I want to buy this? But yeah, I think most people, when they come out, unless they're art collectors already, right. they don't really put the two together. Right. Like sales equal, you help an artist, you buy a piece, you take it home. But, right. and then a lot of art that's for sale now is more like decor. Right. So people want to match what they have in their homes. And if you okay. don't happen to have like a yellow, purple, and green peacock, uh, then not your buddy. they don't really look at it that way. <laughs> Um, but fortunately, once you get the ball rolling and you start selling and people start collecting, it's such a boost mm -hmm. and makes you feel like, um, I sold a piece this year. Uh, I didn't give it to my mom. I actually sold yeah, it. Yeah, beautiful. So it, it, I don't think like your, your question was, do people connect it with buying art? I don't think a lot of people do. Right. I, I think that's why so many events now try to draw you in with music or right. poetry, poetry. Right. Because people will pay for a show even if they don't buy the art. And but it doesn't really help the artist if only the event planner makes money. Right. Um, because I've been in a few shows and have really wanted to make a sale and there's like a lot of people there, but nobody's buying art. So everybody's I think, for the show. Right. So maybe what we need to work harder on because I produce art events mm -hmm. is to um, is to to make sure that the audience is even has a the audience has an awareness that sure you're gonna have a good experience, you're gonna probably have a glass of wine, maybe mm -hmm. meet somebody you like or just engaging with people and enjoy the evening, maybe there's background music, but really when you come into the show that you should be thinking about, like, hoping that you find something that you like, that mm -hmm. you can take home with you, right? I mean, you don't take it home that night, you put it on the red right. dot, but meaning yeah. like, that you could, you, that you're hoping that you'll see something that you, that you could own, right? Right. Right, and not just come in as a museum. And there are some mm -hmm. art galleries that are more like museum, yeah. like, they don't, in fact, uh, Girls Club, they're not selling their art. Okay. They're not. They said it's their own, I believe, their own collection, and they're showing the art. Okay. You know, I actually bought a book. They had a really interesting book about South Florida artists. So I was like, well, right. let me buy that book. Right. I'd like to know more about the history about South Florida artists. But they weren't trying to sell. But most places are really trying to sell. Mm -hmm. So pe for people out there, when you go to an art show, think about that that this is work that's usually for sale. Right. And you should take your time to consider perhaps you'd like to buy one of these pieces. Um, here's a question. She so should artists also become event producers to make an a cash to sustain themselves? I would say not if you don't have a lot of time. Um, I'm I'm an artist. I'm not an event planner, but yeah. I've been trying to plan events to sell art. Okay. Um, and it becomes difficult because when I'm intensely promoting an event, it takes time away from me being able to paint, being able to concentrate on 
creating because now the event takes precedence because I have other people that are basically looking for to me selling their art for them. So mm -hmm. it becomes a different animal when you become the event planner. Right. Unless you really have a lot of time or unless you can multitask. And then it's hard because a lot of artists don't promote their own work. They don't right. even come to their own shows. They don't tell anybody they're showing. So what I would say, instead of becoming an event planner, is when you submit to a show, tell people, people about you're the, the show. show. Yeah, um, tell people. And then uh, Caroline is making a good point. And yes, of course, I'm not saying that no one is thinking this. She's saying the art fairs are about buying and selling art. Everyone there knows the transactions are taking place. That's great for art, Basil. Mm -hmm. I think that's the case, but I'm more like looking at like we're in Fort Lauderdale, people come into shows at the 1310 Gallery, maybe Art Serve, a mm -hmm. common gallery like in Fort Lauderdale, um, even in the, the show I was just at. I know some work was not for sale there, mm -hmm. but some is for sale and just like is a mindset. So I don't think and, and I don't think that overall people have that art basil mindset when mm -hmm. they're here. Mm -hmm. And maybe there are shows here in Fort Lauderdale that when people walk in that they have that mindset. But I'm just saying... There is a, I think there is a community of people who are not as aware mm -hmm. of walking into art gallery and saying, let me buy it. I'm coming here to potentially buy. And a lot of people ironically sell more art on the street. Like mm -hmm. um, when I was doing live painting in Mass District and I just, at first I just had like a portfolio with my pages in it. But then one of my family members was like, you should frame those. And as soon as I framed them, they sold right there on the street. On the street. On the street. Wow. And wow. I didn't even know how to price them. I was like, uh, you want to buy that? And so I had to learn that I needed to understand that I'm selling something. So you got to put a price on it. You right. know, you got to know what it's worth. But I actually did a pretty nice amount of sales on the street. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. But at two and... I was very fortunate to sell, you know, a couple of pieces there. And I think it's a different feeling for the artist. Like when you're in the street, you don't know if people are just buying it because they're your friends or whatever. But my friends didn't buy it from me. There were people I didn't even know Strangers. who bought them. That's good, yeah. That mm -hmm. makes me feel good. Um, but to me as an artist, I like to see my art on a wall. Right. So it just gives you a different feeling. So when people come into a bar and they're like, I want that one, I'm like, yes. Yeah. You know, or if they come into the gallery, you start to feel like, oh, I feel more like an artist now because people are seeing my work that don't even know me and it's on a wall. It does do something for your confidence, even if you do happen to sell more, just kind of like at a fair. Right. It's, it's kind of like, I know people who make a good living selling at fairs. That's all they do. They well, make art and they just do sell. it live and they sell. And that's a very good market for them. Whereas if they did take it and put it in a gallery, that takes them out of what they are known to, to sell do. Right, for. Right, right, right. So yes. It depends on your art and how you feel about what you do. Right. Yeah. So we're going to be wrapping up. I, I think that Carolyn has commented so much that she's earned um, the, to, uh, the right to be on the show pretty soon. What do you say, Carolyn? I think you should join us maybe early January. We'll email you. <laughs> Cause, but no, I'm teasing you. But no, you have some great... Uh, comments here and she has come to nearly every Thou Art Woman event nice. so yeah which is wonderful um, so we're going to wrap up with what I call queer conversation closing questions I asked the question you just answer pretty quickly okay. and, um, so um, what <laughs> I lost my train of thought okay what inspires you um well, other artists that I've always looked up to, I love Frida Kahlo. Oh, I, I love, love Frida. And I could be saying his name wrong again. People are like, it's from, I say Romero Bearden okay. because I'm from the South. I probably mess up every word. Um, just artists that I've grown up um, loving and I've loved art since like middle school. And my oh, art God. teacher, Mr. Dare, was like the best inspiration because I was so frustrated that I couldn't draw a straight line. And he's like, you don't have to draw lines. Oh. You can use dots. And then he introduced me to like George Seurat and all those people, oh, the nice. Dadaists. And I was like, for real? Yeah. So um, I, I would say my first inspiration was Mr. Adair because he was so awesome and cool. And um, I like artists that inspire me. Um, and then from like being Southern and seeing things around and 
Okay, so there's more questions. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Fine. I talk a lot. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. I talk a lot as well. So, um, what makes you laugh? Everything. Inappropriateness. Um, I just love comedy. I, I love laughing. I'll laugh at anything. Um, I'll watch Mel Brooks movies. I'll watch, like... Just tackiness, um, but I also like cerebral stuff too. Oh, yeah. You know, pretty much, I laugh at myself all the time. Um, I'm just goofy, yeah. and um, I like that. Yeah, I enjoy laughing at myself as well. <laughs> um, someone here, your cousin Perry says, "Hey, cuz." Hey, cousin okay. Perry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, what's sexy to you? Um, this is. This is where I get nervous because I considered myself asexual for a long time. Okay. Um, but uh, I would say nothing really overt because when I see overt sexuality, it kind of makes me go, God, my dad's a priest. Oh. It's weird for me. Like, you know, um, sexy would be like. The cerebral? Yeah. Yeah, you know, like I like to read, I read romance novels. I got one in my purse right okay. now. And like, I like historical romance, something that, you know, isn't like, he threw her on the ground. I'm like, oh my God. No, but so like, subtlety. Subtlety is sexy. Like, um, if I were at a burlesque show, I think that's sexy. Sexier than going to like a strip King of Diamonds, and right? Just yes, all out. You know I, yeah. that's not sexy to me. It's kind of odd. Yeah, no, I but, understand. Um, I, like to it. I like hints, hints. or like, like you know subtlety. Right, you know right. a little risque, a little. But not but, all uh, out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah, okay, the last question is: What's so great about being gender queer? It's awesome <laughs> because <laughs> nobody can force you into a box. Like. Okay, um, good. I don't know what's what's so great about it. It 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 frees me. Well, that's it. Because that's it. I don't have to um, I don't have to explain anything to anybody. Right. I can just go. You know what? I'm gender queer. Right. That's which is everything you know, and anything. Right. I love that. It's nothing great. offends me, but everything offends me. <laughs> so you know, but it's something I just realized, and this is why I like to talk to young people, because. Um, one of my younger friends was like, hey, Mr. Don, I think you're just genderqueer. I'm like, you might be right. And you're so like, I just kind of... <laughs> I'll take that. I like that. But that it's awesome sense. because it doesn't make me feel like I have to um, pick up like super feminine habits or you're, super masculine habits. There's nothing yourself. wrong with that. Right, but yeah, right. but it's like, it's not be yourself. Yeah. And that's, so you fit into that. It's wonderful. Yeah. Right. Because it's everything and anything. I kind of know what it means. But I could be wrong. No, you know, I think you're both right. Yes. <laughs> so listen, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And for having me. you have a question over there? Yeah, I just wanted to know. She says young people. What qualify what do you mean by young people? The question is qualify what you know what, what you consider to be. I've young been people. adopted by like so many nineteen year olds. Okay, so people, nineteen is young. Non binary, okay, um, so genderqueer, asexual. Um just I I thought I was teaching them something, but they taught me a lot yeah. um, about like modern uh, queerness. You know, a lot of people just don't use labels anymore. They're like, right. I'm queer, whatever, right. or I'm a unicorn. Right. And I'm like, well, I'm a fairy. And there you, you know, go. so I've learned a lot from younger uh, generations of people who are searching. So younger is like 19, 20s, 20s, young 20s, maybe. Yeah. And they yeah. call me mom, which kind of sucks, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, hey, hey. So, okay, yeah, so thanks for joining me. Crystal Jodan. Jodan. Art Mama Moves. Follow Art Mama Moves on Instagram, and you can join the group on Facebook if you request. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a website also, right? Art Mama Moves. And for people who want to be involved in um, the movement, mm -hmm. just message just, you or yeah, something. Yeah, just message and join. me. I'm very informal. And December 14th is the next event. Yes. Right? And I went to one a couple weeks ago. It was really, I enjoyed it. And uh, just love the work that you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I love you. it. It's exciting. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Bye. See you next week.